we are live. Welcome to 2022's Halloween Ends Review and Thoughts film. Happy Spooktober. I'm going to start by telling you this was a movie that I really loved. And this video will have some jokes and there will be some serious stuff. So, let's see. Yeah, this is one of those movies where you should probably go into it not really knowing, you know, knowing very much at all, but I will, you know, there will be minimal spoilers, if any at all, until I get into the thoughts sections. So, yeah, if you want to know just a little, or if you've already watched, watch. On. So, I realize this video is long. I'm going to do what I can to make it worth your time. So, yeah. For the review itself, there either there will be zero spoilers, or, you know, if I spoil anything, I'll hold up an index finger as I'm spoiling, so you can mute and skip ahead and to see me lower my index finger. Let's see. If, yeah, and yeah. Once I end the review itself and I get into the thoughts sections, there will be a lot of spoilers. Also, throughout this video, I will be spoiling the franchise up to this point, including the movies that are not technically part of the timeline of this one. And I think that is... Yeah, you know, basically... Yeah, the movie itself spoils the stuff from the timeline and the stuff that is not in the same timeline. Some of it I will use to contrast and compare and help explain why I think that this is by far the best of the of the timelines. Now, I let's see. Right, so, this movie is rated R, and so is this video, since I will be discussing some of the material, and yeah, the MPAA rated it R for bloody horror violence and gore, language throughout, and some sexual references. Now, regardless of your stance on the Halloween movies, you know, if you love them all, hate them all, anywhere in between I I don't think that you're a bad person we might disagree but I don't you know the the bad things I say about the movies don't reflect on you whether you you know hate or or love them Let's see. and you know if you hugely disagree with what I say, that's perfectly fine. You know, you can go to the comments. You can, you know, state your own opinion. You can try to convince me to change my opinion to, you know, align with yours. You know, absolutely no problem there. Now, let's see. So, yeah, this is... This is a legacy sequel, and... As such, I, you know, I try to grade these on a curve, because I, I like not being miserable, and that's what I'll be if I focus on all the ways that, you know, obviously, like, if you're watching this video to find out, you know, what movie do I recommend you watch to just really, you know, yeah, to be terrified of Michael Myers, you know, the original, 1978, that's, that's by far the best one. But there are some strengths to these, you know, the, the soft reboot and legacy sequels, legacy sequels. So, yeah. 
and let's see the I guess that covers so yeah so I have watched this movie once and I just got back from the movie theater before I set up the camera and hit record so the plot the year is 2022 we are still in Haddonfield Illinois it has been four years after the since the 2018 killing spree and Michael has been missing but that doesn't mean that his presence isn't felt and let's see the I guess that brings us yes so that brings us to the writing this was written by four different people which is when you make a movie it is a good thing to have a script and a screenwriter and it can be good to have more than one writer if they work together or their work complements each other it is not good to have four writers yeah the more the messier this definitely like it didn't bother me as much as I've seen other people but for sure like you can tell that this was yeah what various critics have said is that you know they did not have the 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 writers and director did not have enough ideas for an entire trilogy when they made the 2018 movie and they've tried you know yeah and and you know that kind of shows Honestly, I liked almost everything we got, but I will admit that it does feel like this doesn't really feel like the end of a trilogy as much as like the the I will say personally, I did not feel like this movie was made for a paycheck or a contractual obligation. The the yeah, the various people working on it are really delivering, and yeah, you know, the, the idea is different, but I do find it quite interesting, and I think I am going to talk a little bit more about, so, so yeah, what I'll, yeah, to, to close off the, the, the writing section, I think there are some really interesting psychological ideas yeah I, I saw someone say it's almost more of a psychological thriller than a slasher movie and there's the uh, what's the word there's some really interesting relationships between characters and just like you know four years have passed and we don't we see very little of those four years but we can see that the you know because we most of the characters in uh, yeah several of the major characters in this we've seen before you know some of them were yeah you know Jamie Lee Curtis is still around and thank goodness for that I really I realized that at some point I guess she's gonna retire I really hope she holds out for as long as it cuz she's like she kicks so much more ass than like you know actors yeah you know the the like I don't know if she has grandchildren but she like she could have and like yeah she she's she's still she's so tough and so badass and so funny and just yeah, I'm really, really glad that she's been in this franchise as long as she has. And it's quite impressive, because it really, like, this franchise has screwed her over, screwed her and her character over in a number of ways, and, she, yeah, yet she returns, because she really does, she, 
she's incredible in that first movie, and then the other movies, you know, focusing on how she has changed, and that's one of the things, you know, she's a character who has changed, you know, she, yeah, the, the, in the 2018 movie, we saw what she was like after 40 years of not really dealing with that trauma, of kind of living, you know, it, to her, it was as if that night never ended, you know, she's still, you know, it, any, any second now, Michael is going to pop up behind someone and kill someone that she cares about, you know, so, yeah, the 2018 and Halloween Kills were about how the, you know, to, to a lesser extent, Halloween Kills were about her trauma, and in this, like, I, I forget if they outright say that she went to therapy. Uh, certainly, whatever she's done, it really worked for her. She has her trauma under control. And that's interesting. I, I really like seeing that, that it's just... I've gone on the record as saying that I I love that first movie. I think there is very little I I I myself find very few things to criticize about it. I'm not saying it's perfect. I don't the the I realize why Loomis doesn't check the the you know doesn't cuz cuz like if he just stood it you know if if this is if this is his vision cone just like do a quick three, you know, pull, pull a an exorcist and do a full three sixty and just check your surrounding. Cause like the moment that he does, you know, randomly, it's like, oh, that's Michael's car. I guess he's over there then. I get why he didn't check for all that time, but I do think it is, uh, it's not the most satisfying piece of writing, you know. But one thing that that first movie nails is that Loomis is a man obsessed, and it is through him that we see how dangerous Michael is. Because for a lot of it, we don't really see Michael. The thing is, that works perfectly for one movie. And then all you have all these sequels. Let's see. So the second one, the fourth, and the fifth. I, I forget. I think they maybe dialed it down in the sixth. Sixth, and then you no, know, sadly, he passed. R.I.P. Let you legend, you, Donald Pleasance. Just seriously amazing. It was not at all his fault, but the writing and the direction called on his character to be just as obsessed for all of movie movies two, four, and five. So he's just constantly running around and ranting and yelling and like, and it's just exhausting to watch. And I'm so grateful that they real, you know, because I think it would have been the same in this movie if Laurie had still been, with all respect to people who actually suffer from PTSD. I'm not saying anything. About, I'm I'm talking specifically about fiction. But yeah, you know, if if we're gonna spend two hours with the character, it doesn't have to be a character, you know, it's okay for it to be a character we hate, but then you kind of have to accept that that's how we're gonna respond to it, you know. And those movies are not, you're not supposed to hate Loomis, you know, it's not, he's not, he's not the, the, you know, th these are th they're they're teen-oriented films, and he's like middle-aged, so you could understand if he was like, ah, oh, he just doesn't understand these kids. No, 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 it it's not about that at all. We are supposed to, and and he's actually, and a lot of people don't listen to him, and it's like, you don't have to take his word for any like in the first one, he, no nobody takes him seriously because he's actually been there. He's he's looked directly into Michael Myers' eyes. And the other movies, it's like, you know how many people he killed. Like, there's no way that people wouldn't take Michael Myers seriously by now. But yeah, the... the Do I have anything more to say about the writing? I, I think that's... Yeah, that's what I had.
to say about it. So that brings us to the direction. So this was directed by David Gordon Green, who also directed the first two of, I believe it's being called the H40 trilogy, which is, that, yeah, that works. That's a, that's a good way to, to put it. He has directed other movies. I have watched none of them. I'm not saying I'm like above it or something, although probably not watching your highness. Um, all right, he did direct Undertow. I feel, I feel like I heard there was something about that movie that I would like, but yeah. I'm not saying I'm, I'm, I know that some of his movies are like weed comedies. You know, uh, Pineapple Express, I think, is about like, yeah, I'm not saying I'm above that. I might watch them at some point. I haven't avoided them, I just haven't sought them out either. And I mean, if when Pineapple Express came out in 2008, if you had told me, oh, by the way, this guy is actually going to do justice to John Carpenter's Halloween. I might have been like, you know what, I can I can sit through. I, I want to see what this guy is bringing to the table. So, hmm, he's directing a remake of The Exorcist? Yeah. Maybe it'll be good this time. Uh, yeah. To be fair, The Exorcist, the, the I want to say, 1973 movie directed by William Frickin is a classic comedy if you don't buy into the the ridiculous idea of exorcisms it's 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 legitimately like like if you if you watch it and you're and you're not like it's it's incredibly funny they they are comedy towns they they didn't need to to do a send up in in scary movie too but then none of the Scary movies needed to exist. So, ranking worst to best. I love the last four. All Halloween franchise movies other than this one. Resurrection, 2009, 2007. Curse, 1981. Revenge, Return, H2O. Kills, Witch, 2018, and 1978. So yeah, I do think Witch is great. I like when this franchise tries something new. And I really appreciate that that's what they did here. You know, this really is, like... If, if you think that a Halloween movie... That, that it is critical for a Halloween movie to feature a... A, yes, a lot of time of Michael Myers stalking and or killing, then this is not going to, you know, this, this like, just, like, the by, by default, this isn't, this, this is not, this does not fit your definition. But I think it's really interesting what it is, because it's, it's been... I forget which it was. There, there was an unproduced Halloween script where it wasn't Michael Myers, and, and don't worry, he is in this movie, but in that unproduced script, Michael Myers did not return in a physical form. His, I, I want to say it was like his ghost was haunting Haddonfield, something like that, and, you know, so his evil presence was still felt, and this, I believe this was an idea that John Carpenter was actually, you know, supportive of. I, I'm not sure if, was it him who helped write the script? I'm not entirely sure, but he did not want movie after movie where Michael Myers is running around stalking and killing people, which, you know, evidenced by the fact that the first one clearly was not leading into a sequel, that the second one, which he wrote, while, you know, he, he, he had to drink to, to get himself through the writing process. And, yeah, like, he, it was a pretty definite finishing off of Michael Myers, you know. It's, it's wild to me that there are people who walked into the third Halloween movie and when when it wasn't about Michael Myers, instead of being like, I guess it was kind of silly of us to expect him to come back from, you know, 
explosion being on fire, falling over. He's pretty clearly dead at the end of the second movie. Instead of saying that, they were like, where's Michael My I expected you to resurrect the the Burning Man, so would you please just... I'm not saying that the third movie... I get that you might hate the third movie, even if you... If, if it doesn't bother you that Michael Myers isn't in it. But the big thing that people really hated at the time was that Michael Myers wasn't in it, and that's why we got... Yeah, I've already mentioned that, <laughs> like... The, the sequels. Yeah. I, I like this trilogy. I like I love the original. Yeah. I love this trilogy as well. But. Yeah. And I love Witch. Anyway. Yeah. I, I really, really like that this is about. Th this is not the, the. This is not a movie where Michael Myers is constantly walking around stalking, killing. But it is a movie where everyone is still, like, Laurie, like I mentioned, has done a lot to to cope with the trauma. But it's not like, like, a, a lot of people in Haddonfield are still dealing with that trauma. And they're like, they're trying to, you know, it, it leads to different reactions from different people. Some people try to find an explanation, which I, yeah. And, and, yeah, that's a spoiler. I'll get into it later. But now, let's see. So, uh, yeah. Um, I'm going to quote a few fellow critics here. Spends too much time exploring its ideas and not scaring the audience. I mean... I would rephrase that as spends a lot of time exploring its ideas. I, I don't think it was too much. But I do agree, This, uh, like a lot of this movie is not all that scary. And, yeah, it's definitely a divisive movie, not what anyone expected. And, yeah, I don't think it's necessarily bad that I, I, I had no idea what I was in for when I sat down for this, and I love that. I just, can we, can we please appreciate that that is the point of cinema? Like, you, you, you sit down, you lock your eyes on the, on the, screen and for you know an hour and a half two hours four hours you don't know what's coming next and it moves you and it surprises you I we gotta get away from this it's just you know ah, I, I you know we we know that we like this well good so go watch that again you don't have to keep getting the same thing in a slightly new coat of paint over and over. I, I really loved how how different this was. And you know, and, and one critic pointed out of this, you know yeah. Way too many of the movies in this franchise are very similar to each other. And yeah. This movie does introduce a new character as a main character and you know, a lot, and, and it focuses a lot on him, and I don't think that was bad. I, I do appreciate that if we had met the character before this movie, it would probably have worked better. As it is, there isn't quite enough time for for everything to, yeah. And, yeah, some people say there's too little Michael Myers. I agree that there is, there's there's less than you might expect. Some say it was a bad depiction of Michael Myers, and some went as far as saying they ruined Michael Myers. I understand where they're coming from. I completely disagree. 
And yeah, one of the things with the four riders, the tone is all over the place. And some said too many red flags ignored by a smart character. I honestly, when it comes to, I mean, we're watching a horror movie. It's it's really difficult to get a lot of scary stuff to happen if your characters don't make mistakes. You know, it's it's very very. Good. Um, 1982's The Thing. Uh, most of 1986's The Fly. Yeah, you know, it's those do those two movies do have characters making largely making smart decisions and certainly if they make a bad decision you can understand why you know it's it's not yeah I I understand why I bother people with this but I really I I thought it worked and yeah some have theorized that this movie will probably get a cult following I think that is pretty that's almost definitely gonna happen yeah I really appreciate. I, I was it maybe. I think it might have been Sean Chandler talks movies, or talks about. I, f I forget his channel name exactly. But if you write Sean Chandler, S E A, yeah, S E A N, not S H A U N. You know, he said he didn't like the movie, but it'll probably get a cult following because there's some calls that you know. That's yeah. If you even if you don't like a movie, if you can at least say it it has stuff in it that other people will really like, yeah. So yeah, um, the opening the opening is amazing, and I I'm not sure I've found a single review that said otherwise. Actually, I you know the the yeah, and I am not gonna give away whether the ending is happy or sad, but. You know, to an extent, it fits with what came before. I think the ending is absolutely perfect. And let's see. Yeah, so I googled and it said that it did not have a post credit scene. And I did have to catch a bus, so I did not stay to check. But yeah, apparently no end credit. Post credits and there we go. So that brings us to the characters. So, yeah, Jamie Lee Curtis, a badass woman, regardless of the decade, as Laurie Strode. And let's see. So, yeah, the big issue with her character in Halloween Kills is how little screen time she has. And in this, she also. There are chunks of this movie that she's not, where she's not, you know, like, it's not so much about her. Let's see. And Andy Matichak as Allison Nelson, Laurie's granddaughter, went head to head with Michael in Halloween Kills. I can't believe I, I'm, I didn't say this in, when I did a review of, 2018 movie her mom in that movie her mom literally told her to be safe to grandmother's house we go and let's see. yeah so James Jude Courtney and Nick Castle plays Michael Myers slash the shape and yeah yet another movie about Seth Myers weird cousin and Will Patton as Deputy Frank Hawkins. And I gotta say, there's, there's this occasional, like, th thing between Frank and Laurie. And it's just adorable. And I don't mean that, like, in a, in a condescending way. It's just, it's really sweet to see, you know, because they have a lot of shared drama. And Rohan Campbell plays Corey Cunningham. And I am not going to read the description from Wikipedia of him. The yeah, he is basically the main character for a lot of this. And yeah, I thought he did a great job. The the actor 
goes through the you know the, the yeah the character goes through a lot and the actor portrays it all very convincingly and Kyle Richards plays Lindsay Wallace and yeah she also played the role in the 1978 original film and in Halloween Kills and I saw someone point out in their review that she's probably the least well used I think was how they phrased it of, of the characters she basically she spends a lot of the movie tending bar and that's basically you know and that's not that's not nothing um, she introduces a character or two to other important characters but yeah for a lot of it it's it's if I don't think they had necessarily written this when they decided that she survived Halloween Kills because she's like, you know, other than her, Allison was the only person who came in direct contact with Michael in the entire movie. You know, Laurie never comes into contact with him in, in Halloween Kills, who actually survived. You know, almost everyone else ended up dead. Uh, you know, most of them killed by Michael. One or two died from the hilarious slapstick that was somewhat tangentially related to Michael. But like, I don't, I don't know if he should really get credit for those. Did they put that on your tombstone, like went out like a punk. Anyway, let's. See. See. Yeah, so I agree that the movie doesn't have as much Lori as we would obviously, you know, this is supposed to be her last movie. You know, the last time Jamie Lee Curtis plays Laurie Strode in a Halloween movie, you know, not rolling out an SNL skip or something, but yes, she could have more screen time in this. With that said, she gives a really strong performance, and again, her character is interesting. Like, I did not expect the kinds of things the character from, from this, you know, and she got a lot of really great stuff in the in the 2018 movie. You know, I honestly some of some of the things that we maybe wanted out of this movie we got in the 2018 one, and it is like it is almost like when you watch that movie. I mean, they knew that they were making an entire trilogy. So, but, but yeah, anyway, let's see, so the, the dialogue felt very natural, um, each character speaks in their own way, the, you know, their identity comes through in the dialogue. So the, the cinematography was handled by DP Michael Simmons, and yeah, he's done this trilogy, and that's, you know, yeah. The the um, yeah, there are some there are some really great, interesting camera moves. There are some really great long shots. Uh, uh, long takes. I mean, and yeah, just various. Yeah, you know the the camera. If you're making a horror movie, the camera is your best friend or your worst enemy. Your best friend because it, it, it yeah, and I, you know, because it controls how much you see of the the scary stuff and how you see it. And you know, sometimes that is what separates the horror movie from the parody of the horror movie. And the editing was handled by Timothy Alverson, who also edited the first two chapters 
Sinister 2? And Dragon Wars D War, but I, I mean, someone had to. I didn't know that movie had an editor. Anyway, the, the, yeah, the editing also, um, there are a lot of things in this movie that it wants to squeeze in. Uh, let's see, uh, as far as I could tell, the movie is about an hour and 51 minutes long. And the reason, like, this could easily have been, like, 10, 15 minutes longer and the way that they get around that is that some of the scenes are trimmed down to, to very short which might also be a, a script thing and some of the like there are times in this where because they have so much to get across like a character will confide in another character and tell them something very important but because there's so much to get through we just get voiceover and and like the visuals are of a transition because they have to get the you know they have to visually show the transition from one location to another so they just have the voiceover and then when they arrive in the place it has already been said and then the conversation maybe continues or maybe doesn't but just yeah that it takes a little bit of getting used to but it doesn't it doesn't really hurt in the movie it's just slightly awkward in my opinion now let's see so yeah some of this was filmed in Salt Lake City I really I I appreciate when you know sometimes when when you go to the go to the filming and production section on IMDb you know, sometimes it's very specific. Like, there's one here that says Salt Lake City, Utah, USA. And sometimes it's less specific, like Utah, USA. And sometimes it's so not specific that you might as well not have bothered as this one that just says USA. You know, it's, it's an American movie. At, th at that point, you might as well just write Earth. And... See that brings yes that is yes the score this was I did not did I not copy? oh right 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 the score is by John Carpenter and you know he he worked with his son and godson on the score and. Yeah, they did an incredible job. I'm really, really glad that he came back for this trilogy. Let's see. Yeah, it actually, like, when you look at his composer, his movie composer credits, like, before this trilogy... In 2012, there was some music for The Nightmare Isn't Over, the making of Halloween 2. I don't know if he composed new music or they're just saying we used some of the music he composed for the first two movies. And before that, it's, you know, Ghosts of Mars. So, yeah. But, yeah. Um... We get another new version of the Halloween theme itself. If they make more of these, I, I, you know, it's not going to be with Jamie Lee Curtis as Laurie Strode. I hope they're going to go in a very different direction, just in general. But if he feels like continuing to make to, to score these that would be great because he really yeah I I have literally never in in my entire life there has never been a John Carpenter score that I was like ugh, that's just terrible 
you know, Dark Star, Dark Star, Assault on Precinct 13, Halloween, obviously, The Fog, Escape from New York, Season of the Witch, Christine, Big Trouble in Little China, Prince of Darkness, They Live, Mouth of Madness, Village of the Damned, Escape from L.A., Vampires, and Ghosts of Mars. See, that's a bit like... I'm not saying Ghosts of Mars and Vampires are good movies, not even remotely, but the score, yeah, and and Escape from L.A., obviously, and Village well, of the Damned. Yeah, the, the, okay, that brings us to, um, yeah. So, this is the part where I get into, yes, the, the best element of this is that, you know, they, they manage to find something interesting to do with a Halloween movie. that They didn't just repeat, you know, I mean, the 2018 one was basically, uh, that, that was essentially... David Gordon Green and his co-writers, co-writer, um, proving, uh, we understand 1978 Halloween, we love 1978 Halloween, we are capable of doing a sequel to it that doesn't feel too, like, limited, like, like, I, I don't, I, th there are things about the the H2O that I think work, but on the whole, it's just not that. It it doesn't it doesn't go big enough. It doesn't get dark enough. Like it, it barely raises the the. It's not that much bigger than the original, even though it came out twenty years later. Like at that point, why even bother? Just yeah. Um, so yeah, you know that was what 2018 was, and then you know, yeah, Halloween Kills and Halloween Ends are both them like experimenting, playing in the sandbox, you know, playing in corners of the sandbox that you maybe weren't aware were there in the other movies, and just, yeah, I, I mean, I don't want them to make more Halloween movies, I think this is the perfect way to end up, maybe, maybe I will watch his Exorcist remake, actually, I, yeah, because, because this, re he really does have some very interesting ideas, yeah, and, let's see, See. Yeah, so this is where I'm supposed to get into the worst aspect. Ultimately, I think the character of Corey should have been introduced before this movie. I think. I don't think there was really room for him in Kills, but I do think you could have had him in 2018. You know, I, I mean, basically, was there anyone left alive by the end of Kills who was introduced in 2018 other than Patton as, as Frank? I think that was the only, you know. Yeah, yeah. Corey, uh, let's see. The, the. Yeah, I wouldn't have played... Okay, yeah, never mind. I was going to say that Corey could have been either Allison's boyfriend or the boyfriend's friend, but neither of those characters could really have worked for... Let's see... Yeah, let's... If if maybe they had rewritten the, the friend... Uh, Oscar, I think his name was, that character, so you could still have some screen time for him there and then he maybe shows up and kills and there's maybe some stuff with him there and then this is the one where he he 
takes center stage and he's really the focus but him only being introduced in this movie there isn't quite enough time yeah uh, let's see so um, yeah uh, worst thing uh, right overall I don't think it's a big deal I you know this is not one of those cases where I wish they had just no, I really enjoyed watching this. So, the worst thing, according to others, I saw some people say that the the scary idea or, uh, of this movie is not explained that well, and it feels unconvincing. So, I, I disagree with the unconvincing part, and I don't think it needed explaining. Well, for sure, if that's how you feel about it, yeah, I can understand how that could really sour the experience. So yeah, I was most worried that it would be a letdown after the hype. I was most looking forward to more of David Gordon Green's version of the franchise. Let's see. Yeah, I just I He made 3 movies and the first one really did deliver like the 2018 movie in my opinion, in my not at all humble opinion, is the first good proper sequel. I I don't consider Season of the Witch a sequel. Since, you know, it's more you know, if if the second movie is a sequel, then Season of the Witch is a spin-off. But the the yeah. You know, 2018 a lot of the way played it fairly safe. You know, just it's is it is um It was another fix, you know. We we it, it was exactly what it was. It was very pure, very very high quality, but it was it was a fix of something that we already knew we we liked. And then with these two others, he manages to to make such different movies from all the others, like you know, and they're they're not. They're not different in the way that, you know, I, I don't, I have no problem with Rob Zombie as a, a person. I'm sure that he's a, a perfectly wonderful zombie, I, is that how he, I don't know, yeah, human being. I might even, I think, based on... Um, Count Jackula's review. I think I would love his. I think it's called the House of a Thousand Corpses. I don't think he was right for Halloween, and I think he tried to make Halloween. You know, yeah, make the Rob Zombie version of Halloween, and I think that was just too different. David Gordon Green, he managed to find the exact right, like, the, the sweet spot where it's still... Again, some people... I've, I've seen a number of people already say, this is not even a Halloween movie. You know, because there's two... They, they don't think there's enough Mike Myers for it to qualify. But, again, like, we have so many, like, you know... Right back there don't worry I, I you know I think all of them I got on sale I didn't pay a lot of money although I would be willing to pay a lot of money for the first one but yeah like if if all you want is a Michael going around stalking and killing you know yeah the first one doesn't have a lot of it because it was more of a proto slasher there are slashers but yeah, uh, let's see, the, the second movie, four, five, six. I mean, even eight, if you can stomach it. Seven doesn't have that many kills. And yeah, I mean, some people do like the Rob Zombie ones, and that's fine. I really don't think we need another, yet another Halloween movie. 
where Michael Myers goes around and, and stabs a bunch of people. It's, you just gotta make it work within that universe. Like, don't get me wrong. If this didn't have Laurie and Allison, then I think I would be like, okay, this isn't really a Halloween, you know. But it does, and they, they have a good amount of screen time. They're very important to the plot. Yeah. So, yeah, uh, the trailers give away too much. I don't know. Um, does anyone still watch horror movie trailers hoping that it doesn't give away too much? I, I mean, let's see. And, and it's also, it's interesting, like, the, what most of, what a lot of the movie is, is not in the trailers. Or is only barely, you know, hinted at now. Cover and poster do not give too much away. And yeah, you know, trailers, cover and poster do give you an idea of what the movie is like. Right, that brings us to the Rotten Tomatoes. And yeah, some lag because I am only using one computer, not two. Here we go. Yes, right now it has a 42% on the tomato meter, which is rotten, and 58% audience score. Let's see. Halloween ends, for now anyway, with a frequently befuddling installment that's stabbed, slashed, and beaten by a series of frustrating missed opportunities. There's 127 critic reviews, and only 53 of them are fresh. The average rating is 5.20 out of 10. And the 58% is based on over 250 verified ratings, and the average rating is 3.3 out of 5. And on Metacritic, it has... Forty-five out of hundred for critics, based on thirty-seven critic reviews, and five point zero based on twenty-three ratings. Five point zero out of ten for users, and of the thirty-seven critic reviews, eight are positive, twenty-one are mixed, and nine are negative. And that brings us to IMDB which there we go and it currently has a user rating of 5.3 based on 5695 MBB users okay um, 15.1% gave it 6, 13.3 gave it 5, 11.3 gave it 1, 11.2 gave it 10, 12 gave it 7, 10.8 gave it 4, 8.6 gave it 3, 7.9 gave it 8, 6.5 gave it 2, and 3.3 .3 gave it 9. Yeah. It's a, it's a, it's scattershot, is, I believe the the term, for for that kind of yeah, and right now it has two hundred twenty four user reviews, one hundred and one, without spoilers, and the external reviews currently has ninety eight links and. I haven't checked for several hours, but when there were 71 links, 42 of them worked and were in English. And let's see. right, the the effects are quite good. There's clearly a lot of practical effects used, and it really does just like you know we know that it's effects. It's not real, but 
the it just it's more visceral when it's practical it just you know we we our eyes can pick up on little imperfections and the stunt work is quite good there's some really really excellent stunts in this and yeah so this does not have as many kills as kills halloween kills does but I don't think that would be reasonable to expect anyway, and that is like, you know, if you just want to see a Halloween movie where a ton of people get killed in gruesome ways, you know, that one is, yeah. But there are some very memorable kills, and yeah, some really, really creative stuff, and like, I felt more emotionally for for this than than for a lot of the the kills for this this long franchise you know f over forty years now and when you watch the movie or if you already have you'll you'll know why but I'm not I, I guess I'll say it at the at the start of the yeah. Now, hmm. So, yeah, I recommend this to fans of David Gordon Green's version of the the yeah this overall saga and yeah people who are who are interested in a version that explores the trauma in a you know in a less direct yeah in a less graphic way and uh, let's see. And and through more characters than the 2018 one. And yeah, um, I guess let's see. I I my my rating for this movie is. Eight interesting explorations of trauma out of ten. And yeah, honestly, I I would I might you know if it weren't you know if I had the streaming service, I might watch this again soon. I'm not paying theater price tickets for more than one viewing of this movie. But yeah, you know, um in six months when it hits the library I you know I look forward to rewatching it and picking up on little things that I I maybe missed or appreciate more now knowing what I know about it yeah so the let's see I think that, yeah so worst to best I love the last five all Halloween franchise movies ranked. Resurrection, 2009-2007, Curse, 1981, Revenge Return, H2O, Kills Ends, which 2018-1978. And that brings us into the thoughts section. So from here on out, spoilers. I'm just going to note the time code. There we go. And gonna, yeah, so notes taken while watching. If I can get if I can just unclip this. There we go. So so yeah, over over the opening logos. Right, um, yeah, so real quick. 
I think you know the I mentioned that I felt more emotion in some of the the scenes of killings and such than in you know a lot of Halloween movies. It's not that I wanted them to do it with Michael, but I am glad they did it with Corey. The fact that you could clearly tell, like Corey, you know, it wasn't just because he's not really like he covers his face some of the time, but he's taken that mask off all the time, and you see his face, and there's just something, you know, he's not he's not quite Michael. It's not the same thing as with Michael Myers, but there is some of that, you know. Yeah, and, and, you know, I, yeah, I mean, some of it was probably, I was like, this is going to destroy Allison when she realizes, you know, and, and just, yeah. I, when, when John Carpenter made the original movie, he said that one of the things that he wanted to accomplish was that he wanted no one to be able to relate to Michael. They, they, we shouldn't, we shouldn't empathize with him. We shouldn't understand him. And that actually had like some of the sequels, you know. <laughs> yeah, kind kind of, it's, you know, not a fan of the time when he tears up. I forget. Is that the fourth or the fifth? I don't think it's the sixth. I, I, yeah. Um, you know, I, I've always hated the, the thorn t twist, and yes, I realize John Carpenter himself came up with, you know, he came up with the, the, ah, wait, let's see, not, th he didn't come up with thorn, he came up with, let's see, I believe it's pronounced summon, yes, um, and the, uh, yeah, he came up with Salmon. He came up with there's they're really siblings, but he hated writing that script. You know, it was he just he had to. You know, he he got really drunk and he said he really hated. You know, he he, yeah. Michael Myers works best when you do not understand him, and I'm really glad that we never came to understand him. And, you know, I, yeah, it doesn't bother me that they're going to make more of these. I just hope that they don't use Laurie Strode or Jamie Lee Curtis in it. You know, that's, yeah. And the, yeah, but, but yeah, the, I, I'm glad we never came to understand this version of Michael Myers. Because I really hated understanding him in the Rob Zombie movies. But I am really glad that they, you know, yeah, they still managed to find a way. Because, like, once he starts killing, it's just, it's so, like, you just want him to stop. You just, or, or for, or at the very least, for him to leave Allison alone, then, you know, but just, yeah. But yeah, the, so the, the, yeah, the logos have the, the rock radio DJ. I don't know if it was like a reference to the the shock jock from ah crap what was it called again um, this uh, curse it might have been though and you know whether it is or not I greatly you know I didn't hate this character the way that I did him you know so yeah and. Yeah, I don't know. It it worked. This you know, every so often we hear him on the radio, and yeah. So we open on Halloween night in twenty nineteen. I did appreciate that, like, you know, in the so yeah, in the nineteen seventy eight movie, one of the movies that are on TV for the for the horror movie marathon is the original nineteen fifties. The thing from another world, and you know when when John Carpenter, I, I'm not sure he knew that he would be. I think he was hoping he was he was hoping he would get to remake that movie, and now in this one it shows his remake, the 1982 The Thing, 
that's a that's a great yeah and let's see. yeah you know the the whole bit with with Jeremy like it is legitimately you know it starts out with ah oh, you know it's just babysitting and he you know they're both trying to prove to the other that you know no I'm not scared maybe you are but I'm not you know and like he's trying to be a good babysitter he wants the kid to to really enjoy you know and it's this thing no more TV and you know, they're watching TV and the uh, you know and and like yeah not a spoiler to say the scene from the 1982 the thing movie that's not exactly the first scene like they've been watching that movie for a little bit now so yeah um let's see yeah so you know he's legitimately trying and you know the the he goes out to to grab something from you know the fridge uh maybe a beer you know and then he you know oh there's there's some some brownie on the you know grabs the knife to to start cutting a little of that and then you know not long after the knife is missing and you know the door is open to the outside and this whole you know and it turns out to just be Jeremy pretending you know and he locks um Corey in the the room and i it's never said outright but like a, i mean i'm guessing Corey is like claustrophobic or some like he he isn't just annoyed or frustrated at this kid he is legitimately terrified you know and I really appreciate that the we the audience get to feel that fear too you know that that's a uh, yeah I'm, I'm gonna briefly so if I were to rewrite so that Corey appeared in the other movies as well I think it works it, it could still work well that the thing that happened was in 2019, so after the other two movies. And he, yeah, he could just be a, a kid, you know, and maybe you could have, like, a scene or two establishing, oh, you know, he's, yeah, claustrophobic or something, and just, yeah. And, you know, depending on which reviewer you listen to, some say that he is to blame some say that he couldn't have known that just like yeah I mean as far as I could tell he had no idea that Jeremy was literally right on the other side like I'm not you know it's not the kids fault either and ultimately like yeah but the the ah, what's the word Corey definitely didn't mean for it to happen. And I like, you know, the, the uh, jack-o'-lantern opening. We see evil taking new shapes. And if I recall correctly, the last of the, you know, we see one jack-o'-lantern after another. And the last, let's see... Yeah, I think, and then we end, then we have a pumpkin that just doesn't have a face carved into it at all. And it, like, opens and you go through the gooey, you know, like, it looks like you're going inside of a living thing. It doesn't just look like, I mean, what are those, fruit or vegetable, some, something like that, you know. But, yeah, I, I quite appreciate, you know, the evil changes, the, uh, the, the, the face of evil is different between the different pumpkins, the uh, jack-o'-lanterns, and finally we get one without a face carved in yet. That is the, the shape that evil will take. And then, you know, Corey. And Laurie's narration does a good job summing up, like, she, she sums up, you know, 1978, 2018, and kills very nicely and and brings us up to speed for you know the stuff that happened between kills and this it is very sweet seeing how good Lori and Allison are together 
and we meet the marching band bullies. I think it was Brad Jones of the uh, the uh, Stoned Gremlin pointed out that he quite likes that apparently there is just this car of marching band you know bullies driving around town bullying people and it, yeah it is like how many let's see so there's the one there where they're trying to get him to buy them beer then we see them at the at the auto yard then they uh let's see yeah then they shove him over see that yeah i am blaming he he i i do not know his name but the the one whose father hates him you know I do. It looked like his father hates him. And then they they show up there at, at night to, you know, four different scenes in this movie, in this less than two hour movie. You, you realize that is, that, that means that on average, less than half an hour passes without them driving to a new location to bully someone that that legitimately is like that's dedication do they do they have nothing else at all like like just they need a new hobby but they're not going to get one not in time and I like that, you know, Lori comes to help Corey and, you know, what was it? The, uh, let's see, they said a psycho, a psycho and a freak or, or something like that, you know. And Lori's like, should I do it or do, do you want to do it or should I? And, you know, and folds out the knife and, you know, tire slash and, you know, when you just see that, like, you assume, oh, you know, they're going to come out, they're going to see their tire slash, and they're going to be like, okay, we're not going to mess with that kid anymore, because this is annoying, you know, but no, he can't change his tire, and his dad is, like, livid about that, so they have to go to the, the auto yard, and, you know, he's yelling, you know, his father's yelling at him in front of all these people, so now he wants revenge for that, as, you know, yeah. And Lori takes Corey to where Allison works, just, you know, randomly, you know, and, and they do, you know, she does basically admit, yeah, I want, you know, he looked cute. It's just, yeah. And, yeah, the two of them are cute together. And, yeah, it's really nice to see Lori and, and Frank, and, you know, they are also cute together, and really nice to see her smile. You know, I've seen Jamie Lee Curtis smile many times. I'm very happy to see her continue to smile. We haven't seen Lori Strode smile since, like, 1978. So that was really great, seeing her, you know, and then it's, then you get the, the sister of the you know and that's also like she survived she survived the the stabbing and and sitting there for you know who knows how long before someone came to to stop the bleeding and you know and you know she she lost her voice and and the sister blames Laurie you know saying you know it's it's your fault that this happened and it's how it is sadly it is there are, in real life, when something awful happens, a lot of people, like, if, if, it's a, if it's the fault of a certain person, then you tell that person, don't do that anymore. And, like, if it gets really extreme, maybe that person has to 
leave that area, live in a different place or something. And then you can say it's not going to happen again because it was just because of that person. But if it happens and there's no reason, then what do you do? Then how do you, how do you go through every day realizing there's nothing we can do? Any minute now, Michael Myers could come back and start killing a bunch of people. You know, so, so just, yeah, I really love how each of these movies have something to say about trauma. And Corey and Allison go to the party, and Jeremy's mother accuses Corey. And that's also the thing, like, if it just happened, then it could happen to anyone. But if it was his fault... Then, you know, and, and obviously when they first f strongly felt that it was his fault, you know, they, they hoped that he would get, like, put in jail or something. And I do, I really appreciate that, like, Corey actually did, like, what's the word? Like, he... Right, when the bullies come after him again, you know, and he, you know, he doesn't just take it. He points out to, to the guy, your dad hates you, you know, and that's why you, you know, you treat me this way because, of, you know, and obviously, like, I mean, it, part of it is probably just showing that he's not afraid of him. But, yeah, there is also, like, it is that idea of, you know, if you, you know, if you're dealing with a bully and you respond in kind, you know, some bullies will back down. But, yeah. And, you know, and that's also, like, the lead bully is the one where he takes the, the, uh, is, is that blowtorch or something and like yeah I appreciate that that was only like hinted at because if we actually saw that would have been just too you know and again I love the thing I love you know I love the 1982 the thing I love the 1986 the fly I love Cronenberg and John Carpenter it takes a lot to to you know for, for me to be grossed out by gore but that yeah and, you know, the, the other one got, like, trapped under the... And, and trying to get out. And then he just drives the car over it. Just, yeah. You know, and, and I get... You know, some people will say, you know... Some some of the bully... You know, there there's... Let's see, there's four of them total. One or two of them will every so often say, Oh, don't do that. But they don't actually stop them. They don't stop hanging out with them. They don't tell the police, Oh, by the way... My friend shoved this other kid off the, like, they thought he was dead, and then they just run off, and then later they're like, let's destroy, you know, let's, let's smash up his motor something. It's just, yeah. No, but, but yeah, the, the, so, um, I thought it was compelling when, Corey met Michael Myers, you know, obviously at first the idea is he's gonna kill him like he, you know, usually kills but, you know, yeah, there is that, you know, the the eye contact and they, yeah, they share some, some trauma and so I guess it's not all of but at least some of the evil inside Michael goes into Corey and I don't think that needed to be explained more. Like, visually, we get that, oh, okay, yeah, the, you know, there's this, what's the word? There's a, a um, exchange of, of violent memories there. So, some, you know, I thought that was enough. I, I really didn't feel like, and, and that is, you know, 
I don't know if the next Halloween movie, maybe the next Halloween movie doesn't feature Michael Myers. Maybe it, you know, um, I guess I don't want to spoil. Yeah, I, you know, maybe they will have, like, the rest of the evil spirit, you know, that wasn't crushed by the, the big machine that, like, escapes into another person who you know, starts dressing and acting exactly like Michael, and that's what they'll do, or some other... Honestly, I could imagine they're just gonna do, like, maybe they start a new timeline, or maybe... I mean, I don't know if there's anyone who still especially wants more set in the Thorn Trilogy timeline, so, you know, but... Yeah, I'm, I, you know, it doesn't bother me that they're making more, as long as it's... I've said that already. Let's see... Yeah, and, and Corey tells Allison about Jeremy, and it does seem genuine. He legitimately, he just wanted the... the um, he did legitimately want to give this kid... Uh, you know, a fun Halloween night. And let's see. Right, so the the um, Doug Mullaney you know finds the, the dead body of the unhoused individual and then there's the the kill scene where Yeah, yeah, that's the one where Michael and Corey together kill yeah. Doug Mullaney really needs to calm down. He should be more like John Mullaney. And, you know, you have this ridiculous macho bullshit with, you know, which, yeah, I really appreciate that the movie, you know, I, yeah, I feel like the movie is, I guess not making fun of, but criticizing the macho culture that exists in a lot of America. Why does Doug... Like, he goes up to Alice and he's like, you owe me a phone call, you know, and he just won't take no for an answer, and when, you know, when Corey is like, she's with someone, you know, just stop cop-blocking me, dude. And then Doug is like, you'd rather go to bed with him than call me, you know, and it's just... Just go back to your table. She didn't ask you to come over. She doesn't want the sponge cake. Just leave. You know, there's there's no... Yeah. And we see Dr. Mathis and... I have to admit, I forgot her name. Be Beverly, maybe? And, yeah, Michael Myers and Corey take them down and and yeah just I don't know it it worked I I I guess I get why some people don't like the idea of and like yeah if you had told me before watching the movie by the way you know he's gonna have like an apprentice he's gonna mentor another serial killer you know they're gonna go tag teaming yeah, I would probably have been like, that doesn't work at all. But he, did David Gordon Green made it work? And, you know, when killing Bev, you know, she gets stabbed so hard that the knife holds her body up in, uh, on the, on the, is it a, is it a door or is it the wall? Something like that, you know, like with Bob in 1978 original. And Corey and Allison are on top of Willie's radio, you know. And then he lets himself drop down, and Willie comes and threatens them. Let's see. And... Yeah, Lori talks to Corey about evil and yeah I 
I'm not going to claim I came up with this myself, but I did want to share this this really clever. I saw at least one critic say that Corey's mom is like Carrie White's mom. And let's see, it was like if she wasn't religious or if her religion was something, you know. But yeah, it's it's totally true. It's very much that same kind of just yeah. The way that Corey will kind of disappear and then reappear, it seems like it should be cheesy, but it just it really worked for me. Very cool death for Willie with the, you know his head gets smashed into the thing until it completely broken, you know, and his tongue is hanging out, and then it's just yeah. And Lori starts drinking again when earlier, you know, we were told it was a really big deal that she stopped drinking. And she gets the gun out of her safe and, you know, and we see that her cell background is still her daughter. She hasn't changed that in those four years. And she, you know, she calls the police and says there will be a suicide, but it was to lure in Corey. And, you know, she shoots him. I have to admit, when I saw, you know, because some of that is in the trailer, I thought that was Michael Myers. And I I thought that she still had a bunch of guns. I didn't realize it was the only one she had around now. And, let's see. Um, yeah, and, and, you know, Lori tells Corey, you know, I'm not going to kill you. Allison will be here soon, and she's going to know that you're a killer. And then he says, if I can't have her... Yeah, what was it? Yeah, actually, I think earlier he said, if I can't have her, no one can, or something like that. And then here... I th yeah, I think he just said... If I can't have her, and then he stabbed himself, and you know, Lori, of course she's gonna pull out the nut. You know, what is she just gonna? Well, you know, yeah, it's it's a very believable human reaction, you know. And of course, Allison thinks that you know that Lori actually intentionally killed him because she's been talking about him being evil, and and I do quite like I appreciate that the the this kind of book ending the f one of the first things with Corey is that he's believed to have intentionally killed Jeremy and the basically the last thing he does alive well yeah almost last because he somehow was still alive after that almost last thing is to make you know to pass that on to make someone else appear to have intentionally killed someone that, you know, it, um, rather, it, it, that it wasn't self-defense. And we see Michael grab the mask and the knife. And... Right, and he finishes off Corey. And then we have Laurie versus Michael. And, yeah, I... I I really loved, you know, um, it's hard for me to say if I like it better than the one we got in 2018. That one is still really great. I mean, yeah, I don't, I don't think I'm gonna try to, they're, they're both really great. And, you know, there's the knitting needle, which is a great, because, there was in the first movie, and it is the, you know, the, the 78 movie, and it is this thing of, like, yeah, you know, um, Tommy Doyle's mom knits, that's a, you know, she's a, she's a suburban housewife, a bunch of them do it, so, you know, when the knitting needle is used as a weapon, it, you know, it didn't materialize, it's not, just, you know, but yeah, and, and this time, you know, he tried, you know, he manages to stab her with it. 
Stop stabbing yourself. Stop stabbing yourself. And Lori crucifies Michael. You know, one a knife in each hand, and then you know causes some crush damage with the fridge. And he actually manages. You know, his his hand is you know stabbed through, and he just out and grabs her by the neck and tries to strangle her. And then she slits his throat. Or wait, was that before or after? Yeah. And... Yeah, you know, I noted here, I really love, we still don't get an explanation from Mike Myers. We still don't see his face. You know, like, we, we get glimpses of his face. But we don't get, like, a really good look. And... Yeah, I, I really, finally, finally in a horror movie, characters act like they're dealing with, you know, something that seems unstoppable. You know, this happens very rarely in slasher movies. But yeah, they're like, he's not dead enough yet. You know, so they, they strap him to the car roof and drive through town. And, you know, the, the, I, I have no idea what it's called, but the big crushy thing, you know, yeah, at the, at the, can I'm blanking on the name, at the, uh, the place where they take the, 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 the dump, I guess it is, yeah, where they, you know, crush, yeah. We've seen that thing like three times over the course of the movie. Obviously, before the movie, before the, the before the end credits start running, someone's going in that thing. That's just, that's like I. You don't have to take my word for it. You know, the film. I uh was it, I guess theory um. Yeah. I can't believe I'm... Uh, uh, Anton Chekhov had a theory that if you showed a gun in the first scene, then by the end of the story, someone has to be crushed in the big machine. You know, I, I'm, I don't make these rules. And we, you know, first we see we see it really early when he's just like going there to to like work there, and then a little later again, I think when when the when the bullies show up with the with the car. One more time when the bullies showed up show up like late at night and he kills them, you know I was very surprised when that scene ended without him throwing one of them in there, and then here at the end, you know of course they throw Michael in, and it's like. Thank you. Finally, it's you know I get it. It's gonna be really really difficult to make a sequel, but but, but it's just it's it is more satisfying. You know any you know so many of these so so many of these slasher movies end with something happening to the slasher killer. And the audience is like, that's not going to kill him, you know, and just, yeah. I get it, you know, it's very difficult to make a sequel, and a lot of these make sequels, so, yeah. I really like, you know, Allison does go ahead and leave town, and that is, like, you know, yeah, it's something he said. You know, it's, it's maybe him who gave, him who gave her the idea, but that doesn't mean that it wasn't still something she wanted, even if she wasn't going to be with him. And Frank and Lori, you know, he, he gives her some vegetables. And, you know, they talk about the, the cherry blossoms. See. And those were my notes. So he gives her some vegetables. I mean... Some conservative Americans would consider that basically a declaration of war. I'll eat no vegetables. 
that takes us to the final section. Notes taken before watching. And here we go. So, I really appreciate each chapter of the trilogy explores evil we deal with today. In 2018, it was PTSD. In Howling Kills, it was violent mobs of ill-informed people out for the blood of their enemy. And, yeah, in, in this, you know, and, yeah, the abusive partner, someone whose trauma and a terrible tragedy and misunderstanding led them down a dark path, if he had been given the mental health care that he needed, like Laurie, you know, yeah, clearly Laurie has recovered a lot by the start of this film, he wouldn't become a killer. These are more realistic evils to deal with than knife-wielding psychos, and the franchise has to work to stay relevant. Otherwise, you know, again, like, the f you can you can go and just watch the other movies you know and and in the 80s it was considered fine to just have a killer running around with a knife stabbing a bunch of teenagers for premarital sex drugs alcohol you know and and i'm not like i love slasher movies i'm not saying that there's something inherently wrong with that but you can't keep doing that over and over just in perpetuity and expect it to still be interesting, you know? Yeah. So yeah, other than Halloween 4, there, you know, there are some other slasher movies that suggest that they would have a sequel where the killer would be someone other than the ongoing killer. Usually they chicken out. I don't know very many uh, sequels where either the main killer is replaced by another character or there is a killer who assists the main killer and yeah I'm really glad that this movie does it I I don't know if it would have worked out in the the other ones and I mean I can't really mention specific ones without spoiling but you know my fellow slasher fans know you know yeah and I, I do really I I get it I I don't like there are reasons there are good reasons not to have Halloween 5 be you know this uh, eight-year-old girl killing instead of Michael Myers I get that but then they shouldn't have set it up at the end of the fourth one you know so yeah and yeah I really appreciate and and yeah it would have been even cooler if we did meet Corey in one of the others and there was maybe this thing of like you know oh is is he quite tough enough can he can he really handle this kind of thing you know and then this goes and and turns him into turn, you know yeah turns him into the killer so yeah, I understand that they intend to keep making movies after this one, but that Jamie Lee Curtis will no longer be playing Laurie Strode. I hope they just start a new continuity and let's see. Yeah. And I wrote that I hope that this one ends with her killing him, getting catharsis. Yeah. I hope the final battle is epic. Yes, it is. And yeah, I noted I am okay with the idea of her dying as long as she manages to kill him and we see on her face that she's okay with dying because she feels confident he will two among the many things wrong with Halloween Resurrection is that Laurie died without killing Michael. She and Loomis appeared to kill him at the end of 1971 via shooting out his eyes, the only part of his face we can see when he wears the mask, and the more effective explosion, Halloween H2O should chop his head off, later retcon into it wasn't him, which that's also like there's no way, they cannot do that with this, there's no that was definitely Michael Myers. No one other than Michael Myers would have behaved like that. And let's see. Yeah, and in Halloween 4, you know, it, yeah, and I'm not the first person to point out, you know, why did Lori think there was even any doubt? Like, obviously, this is Michael that she's dealing with in Resurrection. Like, why why did she feel the need to check? It's It's just... 
And yeah, in Halloween 4 he was shot many times and he, until he fell into a mine. In 2009 he was shot many times as well. Yeah, I really appreciate that this wasn't him getting gunned down yet again. Because, like, yeah. And I, I don't really blame the... Uh, the uh, I would have been extremely surprised if H2O had him dumped into this grindy thing at the end. So I'm not blaming that movie for not having that. But but yeah, you know, I for this, they could have just had, you know, oh, chop his head off, that's got us out. No, 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 no. Crushed into... And it's not just like, oh, implied off screen. No, 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 we see his body be crushed. Just, yeah. So, yeah, I appreciate that they didn't redo one of the death, one of the means of death from the other ones, and that the, yeah, the different means of him dying are better, not worse, and graphic, not implied. Yes, uh, you know, I had guessed that maybe they both would stab each other, and then there's an explosion or drowning, something that affects both and seems impossible to escape. Obviously, wouldn't be enough to leave him to die in a building on fire, since Laurie tried that in 2018. But yeah, the the um, right on the tip of my tongue. Um, yeah, the the explosion. I mean, that would be like the the 1981 version. Anyway. Yeah, I wasn't sure if this would maybe have a downer ending since, you know, the, the, uh, let's see, um, yeah, you know, part two had a downer ending when, you know, yeah, it was obvious that he wasn't going to end up dead, but, you know, it's not the only option, yeah, and, yeah, I have to admit, you know, based on the final trailer, you know, I thought this movie would have Michael Stalk, Laurie a lot, but some of it, you know, the line in the movie when, you know, I thought I saw Michael, or I was sure I saw Michael, when in the movie, she says, in Corey's eyes, you know, so, yeah. But, yeah, um, Corey also, you know, because that is, like, Laurie feels like, you know, she has conquered Michael, what if he comes back in another form and he can, and and she can't protect her own granddaughter from, you know, so, yeah. Uh, let's see, that was one of the major appeals of the 1978 movie. It did not appear in the 2018 movie, which did deliver on many other aspects that we wanted from tribute to the original 1978 movie or Halloween Kills. So, makes sense to have it here and... Yeah, it's, I, I hope they do it as well as they handled the killings in 2018 and Halloween Kills. And they did. I, I The stalking was terrifying. And since this will have a time jump between, between Kills and this, I wrote, I hope we don't see Michael just lying still the whole year until it's Halloween again, like in Halloween 5. Yeah. I still can barely believe that that, yeah. And, yeah, then I wrote, I think they will do better. They already did way better in kills on the vigilante mob that were in the fourth movie. So, yeah. That is it for the video. So, please go into the comments section. Let me know what, you know, what are your favorites? Halloween movies. Um, what do you hope to see in the next one? Or are you boycotting from now on? Did you think this one was any good? I guess those are the questions. Should I watch David Gordon Green movies other than the, the forthcoming exorcist <laughs> you know I I really I'm not sure I see myself watching I th uh, what was it called again her her Majesty or so, something like that where, where it's like two stoners hiding from Natalie Portman who's a princess or a queen or something it's just 
uh, yeah, but the the um, I am willing to give. I I you'll have to make a strong case to convince me to watch that one. But the other ones, like yeah, let me know what is um if you think I should watch them. What 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 should I start with? What are what are the best ones of his? If you like this video, please thumbs up, hit that little bell like it's Michael Myers and so probably still alive if not crushed yet. There should be a link to my main channel page, one two more links to stuff like relevant playlists, a suggested video for you to watch on the screen right about now. I put out one vlog per week reviewing and sharing spoiler thoughts on the movie, and one talking about my spoiler food thoughts on the most recent episode of the current Disney Plus MCU show, which these days is She-Hulk, and one talking about my spoiler food thoughts on the most recent episode of the current Disney Plus Star Wars show, which these days is Andor, and recently the review and thoughts videos tend to come out very similar to this one. In other words, if you want my videos like this, you're in luck. You can check out my back catalog as well as catch my next week. I hope you enjoyed watching as I enjoyed watching and recording, and I'll catch you next time.